here we have for you the Inikin iTaste MVP3. Oh yes, not the one, not the two, but the three. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the outside of the box and then we'll flip inside. On the outside of the box you will see the obligatory Inikin security scratch and check label, uh, which all true, proper and pucker Inakin devices come with. You scratch off the uh, little section here, like so. Go to the website and that will show you whether or not your device is genuine or not. I know this is because this came from Inakin. And here we have the inside packaging, the, uh, the plastic box, normally sealed, um, but I have been using this for a few days. Uh, and in here you have your MVP, MVP3. You have a USB to micro USB cable. And you also get, in the departure from the usual uh, with the MVPs, is you get an Ego adapter. So it's a 510 to Ego adapter. Um, if you remember on the V1 and the V2, um, you had, this is a V1 look, you had the Ego threading on the top. And in order to use a tank, um, you needed to use a beautification ring, really, or otherwise it looked a bit silly uh, and it kind of overhung a little bit. And it was also a red display um, and the button was on the on the front there. Uh, and also on the bottom, you saw the USB output with a little uh, on off switch and the USB charging port on the bottom. Um, what you'll see on the MVP3 on the bottom section is the USB output um, but the input is on the bottom side, which is rather good. Um, let me just move these out of the way for a sec, and we'll take a, a closer look at the, uh, at the unit itself. Let me zoom in. There we go. So, as you can see on all four sides, uh, there's no buttons on the front anymore. All the buttons are on the side. The fire button and the plus and minus button, and of course the screen. On the top, you have a 510 connection with four little air channels there. Uh, and here you have a tricolor LED light, uh, which will go green for full battery, amber for kind of halfway, and red, you really need to charge your battery. To go back to the bottom section again, uh, you have, let me turn it around that way, then you can read what it says. You've got a USB output here, which you can use your USB cable for to charge your devices, uh, which I did last week because I unexpectedly had to go to Scotland um, and I had no phone charger. <laughs> so I used this. Um, it also very niftily comes with this little re kind of retractable removable cable, which is quite short, I have to say. Would be nice if it was longer, um, but it's got the micro USB connection on it. Um, so if you were stuck somewhere and your phone was about to die, uh, and you had this with you with enough charge in it, um, then you could effectively give your phone a little boost, which is handy. I wouldn't recommend that's used all the time. I would still use it with a USB um, cable, proper one, and this one, the best one, really. Let's go to um, this side. And you'll see here we've got the fire button and the display and plus and minus to change your voltages or wattages. You would have seen there it said uh, click three times on. Uh, this has got a three clicks on, three clicks off setup. Um, so if I click it three times, you get the Inikin technology logo and then it comes up with your display. And I'm trying to keep this in shot, there we go. And it goes off after approximately five seconds, which is handy. So it's not going to um, deplete your battery too much. You'll be able to see what you're doing and then it goes out, which is quite handy. Um, this is a variable voltage or a variable wattage. It's currently in wattage mode. And if I wanted it in um, voltage mode, you simply depress the fire button and then hold down the minus. And that changes it into voltage mode. It then flashes. If you press the fire button again, it then locks it into voltage mode. You will also see that if you depress the plus or the minus buttons, nothing happens. 
Why, I hear you ask? Well, he's got auto lock. So if you hold down the plus or the minus for a couple of seconds, the display will start to flash and then you can change your voltage or your wattage to your heart's content um, simply by pressing your buttons. And there we go. It's now going down and it goes from three volts to nine volts or from nine volts to three volts and it cycles through. So it's not a case of, oh, it's just locked itself there. It's not a case of you having to go up and all the way down again. You can just go all the way through from nine to three. If we then press the fire button that locks that in place. To go back to wattage, you press your fire button and hold down the plus button. And now we are back in wattage and we can change the wattage um, from six watts all the way up to 30 watts. And then once you hit either of those, it will then cycle around to the next. So it's gone from six there to 30. We could go from 30 to six. Again, hold it down till it flashes and then press your button to get the desired effect. So if we take this to say 15 watts, press fire, that is now locked in place. Um, and it will remember that. So if we click it off and then click it back on again, it remembers what you had it had it set at last, whether that be 15 watts or 6 volts. It remembers where you are. Uh, if you hold the plus and minus together, very briefly, you will get your puff count. Get it right and you'll be able to do it. It's very difficult to do like this. Let me put that down like that uh, and see if I can do it this way. There you go. If you hold it down very briefly, you get your puff count, the battery life left, and the resistance of your atomizer. If you hold down the plus and minus for about four seconds, there you go, it changes the display. So if you're a left, you're a righty, you can have the display the other way around. Let me change that back. And we're back the other way. Um, it does actually, as well, consider every single push of the fire button to be a puff. Um, so it's not a strict puff counter. It's more like a how many times the fire button was depressed counter. Um, but having said that, it works extremely well. Let me move on to the um, USB cable. And we'll take the little plastic off. It's a nice, robust cable. It's well sealed on both ends and it's quite a thick cable it's also got the eye taste branding on the side there on the uh, side of the usb plug um so you you know that this is your eye taste cable and it's always better to use the cable that comes with your device um, i've actually lost the cable that came with my uh, android tablet my sang my samsung android tablet um, i've mislaid it don't know where it is um, and I've tried many, many cables, um, but none of them will work with it because it's, it's also a data cable, whereas this isn't. Um, but it's always better to use the cables that come with your devices, if at all possible, um, especially for charging. So what devices can this, uh, can this handle? Well, as you can see, it's got the 510 connection. So anything that is 510 will uh, fit on top uh, and it will handle... Um, resistances from 0.4 ohms all the way up to 2.5. Like I said, the wattage, it goes from uh, 6 watts to 30 watts in 0.5 increments. And on the voltage side, it goes from 3 volts to 9 volts in 0.1 of a volt increment. The uh, LED on the top, green for good, amber for get ready to charge, red, charge. <laughs> and like I said, um, if you plug a USB cable into that and then plug in a phone or a tablet or what have you, it will start to charge immediately as long as you've got enough battery left in your battery, which, by the way, is a 3,800 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion. Um, I did use this to charge my phone, as I said. Um, now, on the old versions, you had an on-off switch. 
um, and this being the version one, you can see that you could turn the USB power on or off. It's basically on all the time, um, but it won't draw anything unless you've got something plugged into it. Um, but it's quite handy to have that other little cable on there. It's no good if you've got your phone in a case um, like I have. I have my Android phone um, in, a, in a case, this Otter case, um, and it doesn't fit in there. Um, however, the, uh, the other cable will, and it will charge quite nicely. So, let's put a device on, uh, and I have one of my sub tanks, and this has got the original 0.5 ohm stock coil in there, uh, and I've got it filled up with some nice juice. And it fits on quite nicely. There's a little bit of an overhang with this one because it is the larger tank. If you use the smaller tank, then um, I'm sure it would be fine. Um, and if we look on here, it's actually telling me, and I'll zoom in for you as well. Right, there we go. That's telling me it's 0.7 ohms, and uh, I've got it at 15 watts. So we'll give it a little bit of a toke at that, I think. And it produces quite nicely. This is 18 milligram juice, so um, at half an ohm, it's quite <laughs> it's quite heavy. But you can see there, produces quite nicely. 